welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is Good morning, Pope on Film. <laughs> hey, this is not a test. This is pretty bad movies. Um, I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Edwood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. Uh, this is episode 464 of the podcast, and uh, wow, what an incredible new uh, little intro video. Yes, this uh, is the beginning of the podcast, which is the monologue, which we call Jeff, a.k.a. The Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. Looks great, Bunny. Thank you. Oh, and look at how the words are just spinning around. Ah, oh, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. I really like it. Uh, Bunny, uh, to start off with, I have a real quick question for you. Yes. Is there another word for thesaurus? Uh... I, I, I believe so, but it's a, it, it's like one of those MJ-17 things, so okay. like, like if you find out what the other word is for thesaurus, they will kill yeah. you. Nice, nice, good to know. Uh, but I... Just like all the blue food. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is going to be an exciting podcast. I have a very busy day. We're doing it early, at a special earlier time, because I'm very busy at this time of year. I am a Halloween first responder. Uh, I work for a Halloween store. I, 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 I try not to say the name of the company, but it's like, what other big name Halloween stores are out there other than the one that everybody knows? I work for them. I don't want to say the name. I work for them. It's the best job in the world. The, I, we play music, and I am singing and dancing the whole time I'm at work. The other day, they started playing music, and I'm like, this can't be. Is this? It can't be. Is this? Hell yeah, it was. They were playing Black Sheep by the Clash of Demon Head. Oh, my God, no. Oh, my God, it was a dance party. It was a it was a nightclub for one, and I'm just dancing and singing as loud as I can. It was the best. They were specifically playing the Brie Larson version, too. Oh, it was so fun. And then after that, they played Everything is Awesome from the Lego movie. Oh, I love my job so much. So, uh, so I'm very busy. I have work later today. Normally, I would pack this opening with news and funny little bits and uh, at the top of my head that I thought that you would find funny. But not this week. See, this week I just want to talk. just want to talk about me, about you, Bunny, about us. I've got a lot going on in my life, Bunny. And you, in case you don't know, you're freaking Bunny. Yeah. You're Bunny. So well, there, are two, uh, there are definitely it, two things I, I've got to say this week. Okay. One, okay. I am really enjoying myself some uh, shot of Freuden, if that's how you say that word, for for from Russell Brand. I, I'm I'm oh, really yeah. enjoying everything that Russell Brand is going through. Right. Yeah, now. he deserves all of I, that. Us. I used to love Russell Brand, and then he turned into a freak, and now I'm just really enjoying this. Yeah, um, a FYI, uh, at Sophie Hagen on Twitter, uh, tweeted this. I'm not gonna say X, fuck Elon Musk. Uh, at Sophie Hagen on Twitter tweeted this, quote, if you were a rapist in 2017 and you saw the beginning of the Me Too movement, would you not instantly begin to build your defense? You know, no, that they'd be coming for you. Anyway, Russell Brand's last TV performance was filmed in September 2017 and broadcast in, December, in January 2018. And shortly after that, he started going far right. Oh, yeah. what, a, what a strange random happenstance. Yeah. Well, well, first he went guru, and that's where he lost me. 
Yeah. Where he was just pitching woo and magical thinking and the universe is actually one big brain and stupid shit like that. And then mm-hmm. when that wasn't working for him, that's when he went far right. Yeah. And eat the horse paste and all that. Yeah. yeah uh, my... Fucking Russell, Russell Brand. Brand. And then he posted a video uh, commenting on, on the, the controversy on Rumble. Yeah. Which is like the far right Twitter. And then he got on Twitter and it's like, hey... Uh, this is all a witch hunt. If you want to support me, follow me on Rumble, because that's the only way we can get our freedom of speech. And Elon Musk is like, hey, what about X? Uh, fuck you, Russell Brand. So now they're all fighting, and I'm like the Japanese guy from uh, Legendary Pictures' first Godzilla film. Let them fight. Yes. Because I, I don't care. Let, let's have the two kaijus fight. I don't care who they I don't care who wins. I just care that hopefully they uh, do themselves away. So, so this is a Jeff. Is this a Jeff? This is like an acoustic Jeff. Yes. This one is. Where we sit back. We, we sit backwards in our chair. You get that analogy, right? So, so the, the whole podcast is now the cool youth pastor yes yes uh and also full disclosure is there another word for thesaurus i didn't write that uh father tom at my episcopalian church wrote that oh i don't think he wrote that well he probably saw it online somewhere i don't know but um yeah october is coming up and october 18th isn't that like a stephen wright bit maybe i don't know I haven't seen Stephen Wright in a while, but uh, it's almost October, so it's it's coming up to my favorite time, Oktoberfest at church. We uh, they make a bunch of like sauerkraut and uh, like like sausages and potatoes, and there's a bunch of free beer, which I don't partake of because I gave up drinking, and. Uh, Father Tom always gets really wasted. I I confronted him about it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I came really late last year for Oktoberfest, and you were pretty wasted. And he said, I wasn't wasted, Maylin, but I did have six beers, so I was friendly. Okay. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, if, if, if that works for you. So I've got a lot of shit going on. Uh, I, I booked another performance. Yes. Very excited about that. I booked a second drag show on November 30th. I will be performing in uh, Ada, Oklahoma at their drag show, reading stories and telling my story and joking and having fun. And then um, rural Oklahoma Pride is already beginning to advertise their uh, big theme park show in 2024. Which I am a featured performer at. I'm very excited about that. And my job. Oh, I've been working there for over a month now. It is my absolute dream job. I have a million stories. A million stories. Yesterday, I was working, and this little boy came up. This little white boy, like four years old. And he just walked up and said, excuse me, ma'am, why do you have so much spooky stuff at your store? And I said, well, young man, that's because uh, there's a very spooky holiday coming up. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called Thanksgiving, and it's when I need to talk to my parents. Yes. <laughs> and the kid had no idea what I was talking about. He's like, I'm going to be a ninja for Halloween, a blue ninja. So he found a, he found a ninja sword in the children's area and he kept trying to kill me yeah and i kept being like oh you're killing me so finally at the end right when he's getting rung up and right before he leaves the little boy looks up at me and says you sound like a boy and like i froze because like i've worked here for over a month and so far no one has thought that I'm not a woman or question my gender or anything like that so like I breathe 
and the kid goes, yeah, you have a boy's voice, but you're not a boy, you're a girl. Isn't that funny? And I'm like, you bet it is. I'm going to quickly change the subject. Yes. So that was fun. The Blue Ranger is a rapist. Just He's not being the Blue Ranger. Ranger. He's being a Blue Ninja. Just change the subject. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's so much fun, and I absolutely love it. And oh man, when Thriller plays, you can bet your ass I'm going to be doing a bit of the dance. Yeah. Period. Period. Yesterday, Yesterday we decided, decided to all come in a theme, and it, and I got to choose the theme, and I said superheroes. We're gonna come as superheroes, and I went as the Winter Soldier, and I was all weirded out about that because it's like not everybody knows who the Winter Soldier is. There's gonna be two Supermans, a Batman, maybe a Spider Man, and sure enough, there were two Supermen at work, but. I don't think anybody, I don't think any customers recognized me. It was my first time yesterday working in the weekend, so I am really nervous about, like, those last two weeks of October, though. Yeah, why? Working in a, like, working in a Halloween store the day before Halloween and the day of Halloween, that's going to be insane. It's going to be a Black Friday situation. I got really scared during my training because the training said, imagine two whole weeks of Black Fridays. And that's what it's like working at this store for the last two weeks of October. And that put a chill down my spine. Yeah. Scared the crap out of me. And also, I would just like to deny any allegations that I have been putting fake names on our donation wall. I absolutely have not. If you go on that donation wall, and on the bottom left, you see Trafani's, home of the sloppy steak, Don Bondarly, the king of dirty limericks, um, Bard Harley Jarvis, um, a good steering wheel that doesn't whiff out of the window while you're driving, I don't know who did those, but definitely not me, the person who works there, who's obsessed with I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. I don't know where these rumors get started. Uh, I auditioned for a play, Bunny. Yes, you did. Which was this now? Okay, so since the 1960s, my small-ass town has had a tiny little... Uh, community theater and I've always seen that they're doing plays and, and I, I always thought I don't really act anymore I'm not going to audition for any of these plays then in 2020 they did Pippin okay and I got pissed because if I knew before auditions that they were doing Pippin, oh crap, I would have I would have auditioned for that. I would have auditioned for that twice. Cause I love that musical. That's one of like the top four plays that I want to do before I die. Yeah. And so I said, okay, I am going to keep an eye out on all of the plays that they do and all of the auditions. And next time they do an audition for something that I might be interested in doing, I'm going to audition. So then last year, or was it this year? Last year? Anyway, they did the play Puffs, which is a comedic uh, parody of all of the Harry Potter books. And I'm like, hey, I'm trans, and J.K. Rowling's a piece of shit. I'm going to audition. There was a strict age limit. Okay. Of like, they were looking for actors 16 to 25. I am nowhere near that. So I did an audition. So I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm I, not going to audition for the Harry Potter parody, but I am going to audition for something. But then, after that, they're doing, like, Driving Miss Daisy. Like, what am I going to be in Driving Miss Daisy? Miracle on 34th Street? It, no. 
uh, well, the sound of music. This is all white people shit. And I'm a trans Latina. What parts yeah. are there for trans Latinas in this very small, white, small Oklahoma town? Then I saw that they were doing the miracle worker, and I'm like, ah, this is more white people shit. I can't audition for the miracle worker. I'm a Hispanic trans woman. I can't be Ann Sullivan. I can't, I'm, and I'm too old to be, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, but then I saw, oh, there's a funny aunt. Oh, uh, there's a doctor. Oh, there's a, uh, a maid. I can audition for that. So I auditioned, and now I'm just waiting for the cast list to go up. Uh, right now they're doing another play, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah. And, uh, when they're done with that, I think is when they're gonna do the, um, put the cast list up. So I'm all nervous for that. I I started <coughs> injections of estrogen, which is very exciting. My leg is in super <coughs> pain. So that sucks. Midsommar is coming back into theaters. I have heard this. The director's for, cut. Yeah, for one night only in October, and I'm super excited and, you know, I've really thought about Midsommar, and I posted this on the Facey pages, but that is what broke my egg, is the movie Midsommar. Like, all my life, I had been blissfully ignorant of the fact that I really was a woman. My parents did a really good job of hiding that from me and beating masculinity into me and hating me for for being so sensitive and wanting to play with dolls and, and all of this sort of stereotypical girly stuff. But watching Midsommar, I wanted to be Danny. I wanted to be the May Queen. So the movie means a lot to me, uh, yeah, genderish. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <coughs> From the second you saw that movie, you wanted to be the May Queen. Oh yeah, absolutely. So that that absolutely cracked my egg, which is a uh, like a, a trans term. And then uh, what else? Is it? You know what? Is it? Yeah. It's like huh? a, that. That is a trans term, and that's like kind of a common experience. That there's like one sort of. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. It 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 doesn't happen to everybody, but but yeah, it. There's usually something that you can point to where, okay, like, the egg doesn't crack in the sense of, I watched Midsommar and suddenly the entire shell exploded and I immediately realized I was trans, but the cracks began. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In the summer of 2019, the cracks began in my egg, and that's what started me on my journey was how obsessed I became with Midsommar and how I just wanted that flower dress and that flower crown. Yes. And I just wanted to burn everything down and start anew. The idea of, uh, like the Mother Mother song, All My Troubles in a Burning Pile, yeah. like as, that, that seemed wonderful to me. As long as you stopped asking me to get into the bear costume. That's, yeah, I'm just yeah you would have looked amazing. That. He would have looked amazing in the bear costume. You know what's fascinating, though? What is absolutely fascinating about being trans, seeing who from my past has come back to support me and big, be a big-time ally and really support everything I do, and who is now gone from my life. Yeah. This is fascinating. Like, okay, Wyatt is no longer my friend on Facebook. Okay, you started following me because of the Church of Ed Wood, and now I guess you're gone because I'm trans seems a bit weird but okay you know how Ed Wood used to dress right you know what it's <laughs> it's not a big deal Aurelia from elementary school is back in my life and she's a big supporter and yeah. it's like oh wow this is cool I wasn't expecting you to show up and become a big part of my life again but hey been wonderful to have you I always liked you Jono from high school is no longer my friend. It's like I've known you since like my sophomore year of high school. 
and we've been friends. How is it that this is the thing that... Oh, and then my high school girlfriend Stacy is back, and she's all super supportive and stuff. That's weird. Because yeah. I don't think that we talked from 1996 to, like, 2021. But, okay. So, uh, my cousin-in-law, Alicia, is gone. She was apparently a bigot. Uh-huh. And uh, it's it's my wife Natasha's cousin, Alicia. And she's talking to uh, Auntie Lauren and saying, I don't know how Natasha does it. You know, what with uh, what's going on? And Auntie Lauren's like, what do you mean? It's like, oh, you know, between him, between her and Steve, I can't believe she would let Steve be a woman. And so we all cut her off. And, and and we're all better for it. Yay. Yay. Tom is back in my life. Tom and I talk really? regularly. A couple of times a week. Yeah, apparently Tom's wife is a gender doctor. And so he contacted me like a, a, a year ago and was like, I'm so proud of you for living your truth. And then after that, we've just been talking. It's weird. Tom and I have a, a, a history. And then two of my oh, cousins oh, are no two, longer two, friends no. with me. Yeah? You, you yeah. two? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's a shocker. Newsflash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we exes or not? It depends on who you ask. Yeah. Tom and I. But And then two of my cousins unfriended me on Facebook. Cousins! Straight up cousins. One from my mom's side and one from my dad's side. I can't believe this. I feel comfortable about the cousin from my dad's side unfriending me because she is uh, one of a twin. Okay. And the other twin is still friends with me, so I feel like I never lost the one who decided to be a bigot. Yeah, You know? I still have one. Yeah. I've got one half of the twins. Like if you lose a kidney. You know? Yeah. 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 I still got another one, so that's fine. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about movies. Funny. Yes. Do we really need a Beetlejuice sequel? I don't. I, I didn't re I wasn't that big of a fan of the first fucking Beetlejuice. See, I'm one of those people. And you don't see this a lot in Gen X people, but I loved Ghostbusters when I was a kid. I was obsessed with Ghostbusters. I wanted to be a Ghostbuster. And I bought this Ghostbuster kids book because in the back they had an official Ghostbusters membership card. And I signed my name on it and I put it in my pocket and I carried it everywhere. I'm an official Ghostbuster. But you know what happened, buddy? What happened? I got fucking older. Yeah. I discovered smoking and women and men and porn, and I stopped caring about Ghostbusters. So many people in Gen X have something that they loved when they were a kid. I loved X. I love uh, He-Man. Yeah. And now I'm going to be a 20-year-old who loves He-Man and a 30-year-old who loves He-Man. And a 40-year-old who's a He-Man collector and who's obsessed with He-Man. No, I loved He-Man when I was a kid. Then I fucking grew up. Well, that kind of plays into the second thing that I was really kind of wanting to bring up. Okay. That, that I'm, I'm getting old. I'm just getting old, and I, I have had a little more confirmation here. Because okay. I had been going through Tubi, and I had been watching some... some Old, good old fashioned 80s horror. I love to be for horror and B movies and monster movies. They've got so much horrible shit on Tubi, and I love it. Yeah. And, like, especially for, for that kind of horror in the 80s, I was like right at that right age. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Late teens, early 20s. There we go. But now I'm watching it, and. They come up to, like, a sex scene, which 
was always the selling part of a good 80s horror movie, and I'm just like, oh, you're both kids! Stop it! Stop yeah. it! What are you doing? You're gonna ruin your lives! Yeah, um... I'm, I'm just, I'm just getting old. I, 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 I feel like I just need to look away because they're, they're just like so young. Yeah. Um, and Natasha and I kind of had that same moment. We were watching, I think, one of the Friday the Thirteenth, and it's like, are you really going to be smoking pot instead of taking care of these kids? You know what? You deserve the stabs. Yeah. Yeah. You deserve it. Yeah. You need to be keeping an eye, a better eye on these children, Kevin Bacon. Yeah, I, it's the same phenomenon I had noticed a few years back where, like, just in conversation when you're hanging out talking to people, there are things that you would say that, you know, they're kind of cute, they're kind of flirty, you know, that kind of a thing. Yeah. And one day I noticed I said something like that, and I was like, yeah, no. I've crossed the line. It is now fucking creepy. Don't ever yeah. say that again. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's ridiculous. Um, I am excited about this Friday, this upcoming weekend, which is Saw Patrol. Uh-oh. I didn't, I didn't particularly care to do Barbenheimer, because I just don't feel like watching Oppenheimer. I don't feel like watching a movie where it's like, yes, we dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Well, we had to. And in a way, I'm a hero. You know, because that's what that movie was all about. It, the whole movie was just a way to justify dropping an atomic bomb. Yeah. And I didn't want I, I didn't want to see that. Didn't I didn't care thought, for it. I thought that it was like a really cute... Uh, marketing idea since so, such drastically different movies were coming out on the same day but yep. man by the time it came to release time I was so fucking sick and tired of of Barbenheimer shit yeah but like, like I am this hoping... joke is way worn out now yeah so I'm hoping that this Thursday and if not Thursday sometime during the weekend I will be able to go see the new Paw Patrol film, and then immediately after that, go and see Saw X. I'm really excited about Saw X. Shawnee Smith is back as Amanda, and the movie is set um, like a like a week after the first film. Okay. So they say that they want to call it Saw 2, but I'm very excited. Uh, John Kramer knows that he has cancer. He goes to Mexico because he's heard of this miracle cure but all the people who are doing the miracle cure are just uh con artists robbing people of money so he decides to get all john kramer with him. i'm excited about that and it focuses heavily on john kramer's relationship with amanda and so i am all psyched for this one of the good things about working in a halloween store my freaking movie knowledge and this podcast helps me out so much yeah Good. And someone came in, and it's like, do you have any Saw merchandise? And I'm like, we've got a mask over here. Are you excited about Saw X? What are you? What were your thoughts about the movie Jigsaw? I actually didn't mind Chris Rock's take on it. And their mouths are, like, hung open. I talked to this one guy for, like, ten minutes about the three creep show movies. Yeah. And he was blown away by that. You're the only woman that I've ever met who loves all the Halloween movies. And it's like, yeah. Where's my cake, Bedelia? <laughs> love, love those movies. And also, I can respect the fact that that George Romero and Stephen King said, we want to do a Tales from the Crypt movie. Let's just make our own. Uh, but now, okay, you know? so Creepshow 2. Okay, Creepshow 2. One That's the one with the Indian and with the black stuff in the, in the lake. The raft, yeah. So, way before this movie came out, okay, where Stephen King was, he was getting there, you know? He was building yeah. up in popularity. And, and, I had read, the and I had read a few of his books, so I was a fan. 
So I'm coming home from work, and I stop in the 7-Eleven for probably beer, let's just say. Uh, chances okay. are good. 99% I was stopping for beer, okay? Uh, and I saw behind the counter where they kept the, the dirty magazines then. Mm -hmm. I saw on one of the covers, short story by Stephen King. Heck yeah, okay. And this was, yeah, like this was one of those magazines, the, one of those magazines that just really makes you feel dirty buying it, you know? Yeah. Where, where it's just like, all the pictures are taken by the girl's abusive boyfriend from Meth Yeah. Line, you know? Yeah. It was yeah. one of these. But I bought it because I'm a fan. I'm a true fan, damn it. And it was it was the raft, and it was like an insert of God knows how many pages, like a little booklet. Huh. And that's where that's, I first read the read read the raft. That's awesome. I bought a issue of. If I ever issue meet of, Stephen King, I'm telling him that one. Yeah, I bought an issue of Playboy magazine when I was working in the children's department of the bookstore. And I felt really uncomfortable going to the register as Mr. Steve and buying an issue of Playboy magazine. But I needed to, because I was putting the magazines away, and on the cover it mentioned Manos, the Hands of Fate. So I bought it, and there was a lengthy article about the intense legal battle between who owns the damn rights to Manos, the Hands of Fate right now. Yeah. Some people claim they do. Some people, some like a, a Jackie, is trying to keep her hand on it because she was in the movie. She was the little girl, and her dad was the master. Yeah. But, but she tries to say she has the rights because she was in it. But that doesn't mean she has the rights, you know. Yeah. It's all sorts of confusing, and it's like dad make it isn't wasn't it his movie. I think so. I'm, I, I don't remember that. W it was a long time since I worked at the bookstore, but I love that article. Yeah. And then some guy claimed to be uh, the reincarnated spirit of Hal P. Warren, and that he should own the rights, which is nonsense. But it's nonsense befitting Manos. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I. Before the time cuts out, I saw a wonderful movie called Theater Camp recently. I absolutely fell in love with it. It's about a theater camp for talented young kids, but the founder is in a coma, and the the camp might be losing its funding, and they have to find a way to save the camp, and it's adorable and funny and I'm not sure if it it was laugh out loud funny for me I'm not sure if it was laugh out loud funny for me because I have a theater background but it it a lot of it was ad lib so it feels like a very theater centric Christopher Guest movie yeah and I really really liked it and enjoyed it and it's one of my top 10 favorite movies of the year it's highly quotable my wife and I are quoting it like crazy love this movie theater camp it it had a very limited release in theaters and I wasn't willing to drive an hour and a half to go see it so I waited for it to be a download and it just came out as a download wonderful film wonderful film absolutely love it uh, so there's no hap this week because I'm very busy and I didn't write one. Um, but there will be a mini half during the discussion of this week's movie because there were some legal issues with this film and we are going to be talking about that. We're also going to be talking about monster lineage. Like, who was the parent of the beast from 20,000 Fathoms? And who was the beast from 20,000 Fathoms kid? Yeah. We're going to get all into that. And uh, I'm very excited to talk about this week's movie. Also, uh, spoiler alert, during our discussion of the movie, I will be talking about my sexual awakening. Okay. 
I saw a Pedro Almodovar film. For, for me, it was when the girls threw over their, their bathing suits in the water tower in the opening of Petticoat Junction. I knew nice. that. Nice. I know I exactly what scene that it. is. Yeah, yeah um, for, for me, it was literally a Pedro Almodovar film. film. Yeah. Okay. That I should not have seen at such a young age, but we're going to get into that when we discuss the film. So we are going to be taking uh, like about a 10 minute break because we record the Sun Zoom. And so uh, we're going to take a short break. There's going to be some music, some cartoons, some fun. When we come back, we are going to be discussing the works of legendary Spanish director Pedro Almodovar by discussing the 1953 American monster movie, The Beast from 20,000 Adam. I feel like it's been a while since our podcast has done something so strangely meta. Yes. And I'm happy that we're doing this. I have a biography of, of Pedro that we're going to get into, and I think you're really going to have fun. <laughs> but uh, first, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. I concur. We will be right back with more of the Vauban film after this. You do not have clothes on. Do not get in front of this camera. You are just in underwear. I don't want us to get in trouble. It's, it's difficult to record this right now because literally the only people that are awake are Eleanor. Yeah. Everyone else is still asleep. 